Warning, this story contains artistic depictions of sexual conduct. All characters in the story are over the age of 18. Any similarities to real people living or dead are coincidental. All right, continuing on with the next uh, installment here. If I rem it's been a little while, so I'm trying to remember. If I remember correctly, we were just coming from the classroom. The confrontation between Robin and Belle. So, uh, that got a little bit on the spicy side, and we're continuing on. I guess he's returned home after a day. What time do you call this? That's the first thing Sally says when I return home. Not, hello, how was your day? Or, you look tired, why don't you sit down? But, so what time do you call this? Though it's phrased as a question, I have enough sense to realize Sally means it strictly it's in a strictly rhetorical sense. She knows what time it is already. It says so on the clock in the kitchen wall. It's plain as day, 6 o'clock. Give or take a few minutes, given that clock is a few minutes fast. It isn't a curious inquiry, it's an outright accusation. Look, I'm sorry, Sal. I know that's a little later than usual, but I couldn't help it. I had a staff meeting. A staff meeting? That's right. I told you about this morning, didn't I? Not that I recall. No. Hmm? Are you sure I didn't? I could have sworn I did. It doesn't matter how much you swear. That doesn't change the fact that this meeting slipped your mind. Now why is Sally making those little worm-shaped quotation marks with her fingers? I really was in a staff meeting. I didn't enjoy it one bit, and it was incredibly tedious, but that's what happened. What did she think I was doing? Does she really have that little faith in me? <laughs> Given the scenario you were just in with the piano and with Belle, uh, yeah, that might be just a little bit of guilt tingling in the back of your mind. <laughs> This is like the Great Milk Inquisition of last night all over again, and I'm in no hurry for a reprise of that. Well, can you blame her? I'm sorry, Sal. I must have forgotten. I've been to so many of these damn meetings that these few, last few weeks, it's hard to keep track of it all. And is that why you didn't look at your voicemail? Because you've been so damn busy? Voicemail? What are you talking about? Talking about Melly, Robin. She wasn't. She was sent home from work earlier today. I had to go and pick her up. Huh? Wait, what? I thought Sally was just complaining for the sake of complaining, as she, as she is so wont to doing nowadays. That's gonna confuse me. Want, but it's a different term I'm not familiar with. Anyways. I didn't expect there to be a real valid point of criticism concealed amongst her words. Jeez, I must sound like I had such a hypocrite. There I was, complaining that Sally doesn't trust me when I don't trust her either. <laughs> My parents argued a lot. Maybe that's where I learned all these tricks from. The bickering, the suspicion, the paranoia, the dislike. Oof. That's right. Melly hurt herself, Robin. She was acting distracted all day and kept falling asleep in class. Insomnia. That's what Melly has, apparently. Then, in the middle of P.E., she tripped and sprained her leg. She could barely walk. She had to go home. And a sprained leg, too. Not to mention social anxiety, depression, and daily medication. And why we don't try to tackle this one hurdle at a time. That's what Joan Fowler, Melly's psychiatrist, though according to Joan, she isn't a psychiatrist, she's a child welfare expert, says. Man, that was, that was a mouthful. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I didn't check my voicemail then, I didn't think. No, you never do, do you? Ouch. 
Well, mobile phones are banned in our school, for the students I mean, ever since Dylan Price pinched Phoebe Walker's iPhone. For those who aren't familiar, pinched means like steal. It's British slang. Not that a child even needs iPhones anyways. What are they, seven? Eight? And what does that have to do with Melly? I just meant, since the children aren't allowed to have phones at school, it sets a pretty poor example if I have mine turned on all day. That may be the case, but you could have checked it when, when class ended. Heh, <laughs> he was kind of distracted. I know. I'm really sorry, Sally. It totally slipped my mind. So how is Melly? When did she have P.E.? You don't know your daughter's own timetable? Schedule. I hardly know my own timetable, Sally. I had the shock of my life just this afternoon when instead of class two, year six, I had class three, year one. I don't know why I even bother to tune the piano since those year one students can't carry a tune in a bucket. So you broke out the maracas again, didn't you? Against my better judgment, yes. Give them things that make lots of noise and they'll be happy. <laughs> I'm sorry, this this look on her face right here, this look, I have not seen this. I think this is the first time I've seen her like have a pinch of a smile show. Everything has been like resting bitch face or RBF as I sometimes lovingly call it. Or just, you know, suspicion or, you know, doubt. But this is the first time I've seen a smile of sorts on on Sally here. A small smile quirks the corner of Sally's lips. It flickers there, uncertain like a guttering flame. I think she's annoyed at me, but the mental image she must have of me being overrun by screaming five-year-olds is so entertaining she can't stop herself from smiling. Well, a smile is better than no smile, I suppose. Melly had PT... PT... Oh, boy. Melly had PE in the afternoon. It was her second to last lesson of the day. So she hasn't been back home for long? Not too long. She spent most of the time upstairs in her room. I think she's resting. You don't think Melly's sprained a leg is anything life-threatening, do you? I'm sure she'll be fine in the morning. She hasn't broken any bones. The school nurse said it was just fatigue. Fatigue, huh? I wonder what she'd been doing to tire herself out so much. It's not like she ever leaves her room. Maybe homework. She's always been so anxious about her grades. She shouldn't worry so much. She's far smarter than I was when I was a kid. You should tell her that more often. It's probably because you don't phrase it, praise her enough that she has such a low self-esteem, especially given those disastrous piano lessons. Were they really that bad? You made her cry. And I also hit the right mouse button. That's why that little skip happened just now. I should disable that. <laughs> I might have done, but there was years and years... I might have done it, but that was years and years ago. She's probably forgotten by now. Obviously not. I think you're underestimating just how delicate Melly is. Maybe. I stretch. I slightly feel slightly more at ease that I know my Melly isn't in any, any life-threatening danger. I think he feels more at ease because his guilt isn't kicking in as much. It was just a sprained leg, not even a broken bone. You think I should go and talk to her? Ask her if she's alright? I don't know if Melly's in the mood to talk to you right now. She's stressed enough as it is. So first you tell me I should pay more attention to my daughter, and now you say I should pay less? A man can't do both things at once, silly Sally. I know, it's just, it's complicated. You're making it more complicated than it needs to be. I just want to talk to my daughter, not find a cure for cancer. Sally sighs. 
I just think if you really cared about Melly, you would have come back home earlier. It might seem a tad insincere. This again? I already told you, Sal, I was in a meeting. I can't do anything about that. I know, Robin, but Melly might not. You've never bothered to explain it to her. Ah, I... I pause, my mouth hanging open, my self-righteous indignation cut short. Sally might have a good point, given how I rarely speak to Melly. It's entirely probable that I never explained my circumstances to her before. Maybe this whole time Melly was laying upstairs in her room, curled up in bed, wondering where I was, thinking if I didn't come because I didn't care, because I don't like her. But that isn't true. At least I don't think it is. Oh. I can't deny that I find Melly, find Melly hard work, but I do love her. She's my daughter. I know I haven't been as forthright with Melly as I should be, but I don't know where to begin. I don't want to worry her. She doesn't need to know how busy I've been at work. <sighs> or that the headmistress keeps firing staff left, right, and center. How busy at work, huh? I know how you feel, Robin, but Melly isn't a child. You should try to be more honest with her. But what good does honesty do? It just upsets people. But hiding things and playing mind games hurts far, far more. And sprained legs, too. I'll take it. It did look rather swollen. Did you put ice on it? Mmm, pack of frozen peas. I think it's gone down now. That actually is a good alternative to ice. Well, that's good. Yeah, that's good. I stand in the corner of the kitchen, running my options through my mind like paper through a printer. Naturally, also like paper through a printer, my thoughts keep getting jammed, and I have to pause to manually reload them again and again. Right. Think I'll see Millie later after she's had a chance to rest up. Hmm. Give her a couple hours. I think I see I need some time to prepare myself. You need to prepare yourself to spend time for your daughter? With your daughter? Sure. All guys get anxious when they have to talk to pretty girls. <laughs> oh, boy. Sally rolls her eyes, but at least she doesn't look annoyed. I forgot you were such a charmer. I laugh. I guess it's easy to forget. Marriages has domesticated me. A pause. You do think our marriage was a good thing, don't you? Of course. I wouldn't have agreed to it otherwise. We're just going through a rough patch, that's all. A couple, all couples have them. Oh, Sally. I sigh, overcome with emotion. Sally sounds like her old self again. Sally Pally, when I was tugging at her ponytail like she always tied it, she always used to tie it back in. Or silly Sally, when she said something ridiculous and I wanted to make her blush. She said we're going through a rough patch. She has no idea. Things might be rather more complicated than her cautious optimism leads her to believe. <laughs> yeah, they definitely, um, with you playing with that cat girl, definitely uh, complicates things. 